In this video, I'm going to show you how I calculated the 95% confidence interval for the correlation between education and earnings per day that I reported in the textbook. And the procedure that this is based on is a paper published by Weaver and Koopman in 2014 where they included an SPSS macro to allow you to calculate a confidence interval for a correlation in SPSS. And it's actually kind of surprising how complicated it is to calculate an accurate confidence interval for a correlation. Because if you look at the macro that they produced for this, and I've got a link in the chapter of the textbook that allows you to download the macro. I'll try to remember to put a link into the description of this video so that you can just download it straight from the video. And this is the updated version that Bruce Weaver created back in 2016. And the first step of executing this procedure is to have this macro open and then run the macro. And this is going to put the program into SPSS's memory. So I'm going to click on Run and All. And you see that that kind of jumped a little bit on the column here. And that implies that SPSS has got it in its memory. Before I go to the next step, I'll just show you the variables again. So I've got education here. This is years of education completed and earnings per day. And that's the, those are the two key variables that form the basis of the correlation. So the next step is to actually run the macro with the variables of interest and a couple of other specifications. So the first row here is you telling SPSS what data file you want to use. So this exclamation mark row ci data set name equal that has to be exactly as stated here and what i recommend you do is to have only one data set open which is in this case here education underscore earnings underscore n underscore 40 and that's what i've told the little syntax here is that that's the name of the data file so education underscore earnings underscore n underscore 40. So that is going to make use of the data file. The next one is the variables. And I'll include this syntax in the description of the video so that you can just copy and paste and then make slight amendments for your situation. So the variables I'm interested are in are education and earnings per day. And those are the two variables here. I could include more variables if I wanted to. The macro will handle, this macro was built to handle more than just two variables. So if I wanted to include IQ, I could do so easily by just adding IQ here. And that's all I have to do. But for this one here, I just want to have these two variables as I showed in the textbook. And here's the confidence level. Most people want 95% confidence, but you can put 99% confidence, or you can put 90, you can put anything you want. 95 is consistent with an alpha level of 0.05. Now here's list-wise specification, and that's e equal to one. So that specifies that the correlations, if I had more than one, and in this case, I only have one correlation, so it doesn't make a difference. But if I had several variables, and there was some missing data across these variables, by specifying listwise equal one, it will ensure that all the correlations are based on the same sample size. So it basically takes the smallest sample size and uses that smallest sample size to calculate all the correlations. If you put zero here, it'll do pairwise correlations, which means the sample sizes will vary across the correlations because it's going to use all the information available. That's up to you to decide how you're going to do it. The last one is the correlation matrix and whether you want that outputted or not. And I specified one. To be honest, it makes very little difference whether you specify this or not. So those are all the specifications that you can include in the syntax in order to execute the confidence intervals for the correlation. So once I've got that all set up, I just have to click Run. So I'm going to run all. And here are the results. So let me just make this look a bit better. So Okay, so here's that correlation. Education, earnings per day, the point estimate of the correlation is 0.337. We knew that already, but what we didn't know is lower and upper bound. So that's 0 0.029 and 0 0.587. Those are the 95% confidence intervals associated with the 0.337 correlation. And here's the p-value which was also reported already. We knew that because SPSS can estimate this and SPSS can estimate the p-value. It can't estimate this accurately, at least not based on the versions available today. So this is the confidence interval, 95%. The last thing I'm going to show you is where I introduce the IQ variable to it. So let me 
I'll also note that it does create a new data file where you get the same results. Uh, you don't really need that, so I'm going to just delete that. And I'm also going to uh, delete this output because I'm going to get it again. So here I'm going to add IQ to this variable list and then run again. And here are the results. So I've got a lot more rows in the output because I've added IQ to the analysis. We already know the 0.337 and the lower bound 0.029 and upper bound 0.587 for education and earnings per day. But here we've got earnings per day and IQ with a correlation of 0.309. And notice how it's not quite statistically significant. And correspondingly, the 95% confidence intervals are intersecting with zero. So it's just barely lower than zero. It's negative 0 0.003. That's the lower bound 95% confidence interval. And that's for earnings per day IQ. And the upper bound is much higher, 0 0.566. And that's the correspondence between p-values and confidence intervals that I discussed in the textbook, is that as soon as you get a little bit over the 0 0.05 mark, that's when you just barely intersect with zero and you've got confidence intervals, one negative and one positive. So that's the connection between confidence intervals and p-values. But for education and earnings per day, the lower and upper bound are both on the positive side and the point estimate is positive and therefore it's statistically significant. So that is how you can calculate 95% confidence intervals or any confidence interval you want with the Bruce Weaver macro in syntax.